Hello and welcome to the When We Cry Umineko Book Club podcast, episode 8. We will be covering episode 2. I am your host, Lorenzo. Uh, I'm Des. Also, congratulations, Lorenzo. You, you were able to introduce the episode without stumbling. <laughs> um, and this is <laughs> your you. other people, witches. Um, sorry. Um, this is my show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Well... It's been a while. There's been some tumultuous things going on in current events, but we will not talk about that. We were going to talk about ourselves and our lives. How are you guys doing? What's what's new? What's up? What's going on? Uh, I have I have this concluded that I really need a new laptop, I, as if it was not a, like okay. I don't know when this is gonna come out, but there has been a long episode that has taken me eight fucking hours to edit. So I definitely <laughs> need a new laptop. Well, audio editing is pretty intense. And mm-hmm. I have been doing some research. I have been doing some research. And on the best scenario, I'm going to have a new laptop a little bit more than a month from now, which is going to be at the end of February because oh, that's right. when my birthday cool. is. So, yeah, I'm probably going to have a new laptop by then. Oh, and I really exciting. need a new one. Yeah. Anyway, how about you? Um, we'll go with Mushroom first, I guess. Um, let's <laughs> think. Up? I don't think I did anything that exciting. I'm almost done with Age of Calamity. Um, oh, cool. Oh, it's pretty good. I was always into the Dynasty Warrior games. I think my friend told me that like the ending is either like a mm. make or break for you, like as in like you either would really like the ending or not. Um, so far, I don't hate it. Like it's, I think it's like it's kind of like a fun trashy game, and it's great. great. Nice. That's it, good to know. It did what it was made to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's good. That's great to hear that you liked it. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, sorry. You guys don't hear barking, do you? No, I do not hear barking. Okay, awesome. Because my dog's being. A, Yo, a bring him in right now. Bring the Very dog in. No. <laughs> oh, special what guest, are, guest appearance. What are your, your dog. dog's <laughs> thoughts on episode two? No spoilers yet. It's gonna be your. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the thinks. classic joke. He can't even read. Stupid ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, how have you been doing, Lorenzo? Oh, I've been doing okay, I guess. I've uh I started reading House in Fata Morgana, oh. which is pretty great so far. I like it. It's pacing is super great. <laughs> oh, really? I don't know how to, what to say. The pacing's way better than Umineko, but any story's pacing is <gasps> Shut the fuck up. Umineko. The pacing in Umineko is perfect. Except for the uh, flashbacks I'm... in episode 2 and the stuff that right. goes on in episode 7. The pacing is amazing. Everything else about it. <laughs> Jesus, it's 300 hours too long, you know? I mean, like... Yeah. What? I think, like... No. How, how many hours have... I mean, how many hours have you spent on Fedemogra? Uh Right now, it's eight, and I am... That, that's, like, four hours per chapter, as opposed to Umineko, which is, oh, like, yeah. 12 <laughs> minimum. <laughs> No, it's way longer. Um, on past episodes, I mentioned that I'm reading Umineko mm-hmm. with a friend, mm-hmm. and he just finished EP2, This, which is mm-hmm. how I got mm-hmm. caught up. Nice. And he, on his theme hours right now, it's 80 hours for just finishing EP2. Yeah. Like that. that happened to me too because i'm like stupid slow, a slow reader and you know episode two is such a yeah. slog compared to like all the other ones. i think if, if right now we can even prove that episode two is a slog by how we're structuring our episodes like there's literally like yeah. not that many hours left in the day of the clock of Nokendima, and it's taking us like forever to just finish them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Every new book web episode will reduce the amount of chapters we're covering. <laughs> I mean, it's got only going to get longer from here because there's like so much to unpack. Like, they add so much more elements to unpack, like, the further you get into the story. It's going to be. We're going to have content for quite some That's time. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's okay. It'll give me something to do during the lockdown. It'll be great. <laughs> oh, just like because the lockdown's going to last forever at this point. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> and in non-book club or Umineko related news, I like recently discovered a <laughs> K-pop choreography that I've been obsessing over <laughs> ever since I found out about it. It's okay. 
You guys, are you like well versed into K-pop, or at least have some passing sure, knowledge? Sure, I, I have cursory knowledge of K-pop. I have uh, my knowledge of K-pop is like super superficial. I I know almost nothing. Okay, well you're you're gonna learn a little bit. It's just one dance, one <laughs> video, one song. It's called Naughty by two members of the group Red Velvet. Ooh. Its choreography is like bonkers i'll share a video later but it's completely based off of tutting you know the um the kind of dance where you make box shapes with your wrist and arms yeah kind of like um yeah ah but it's it's nuts the like ugh, it, it's i i can't really even put it into words it's just <laughs> it's mesmerizing cool amazing it's I, I don't know. It was worth staying up all night watching, I guess. I, like, watched it <laughs> over and over. I tried to do some of did it. Did you have fun? I did mean, you have fun? Because if you did, then it was worth it. I mean, like, I looked, I was watching it, and then I looked up, and it was 5 a.m., and I was like, did I really just do that? That's embarrassing well, Lorenzo, and sad. <laughs> are you thinking about, are you thinking about learning the dance? Oh, I, I can do a little bit of it, but it's... It's really hard and it hurts a lot because tutting makes you bend your wrists all the way back, right? And it oh, hurts. Yeah, it does. It, that, that's ah, funny. I damn. guess, like, if your hands are not structured in a way that makes it easier to do, like, a 90 degree bend, like a back bend, it must be kind of annoying. Good to know. No, I mean, like, yeah, it's it's just, I mean, here's a fun fact about me. I have a sort of thing for choreography. <laughs> so if I see one that I'm into, I'll at least attempt it, and it looks really cool if you can pull it off, but I obviously can't. I need to, like, practice a yeah. little more. Yeah, uh, dancing is kind of fun. Talking about choreographies, I... <laughs> so, like, yeah. every, everyone's uh, Watch Waiter playlist on YouTube is filled with videos we never get to actually watch, right? So, like, <laughs> right. I was I was cleaning my, my Watch Waiter playlist, and I found this, like, full version of the Haruhi Suzumiya Aww. dance, like the one from and so like yeah 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 that one so like I, I i watched it again before removing it from the from the watch later playlist but like for some fucking reason i memorized the move where she like throws her arm upwards then to the left then the the hand ends up stretched out in front of her face and then she does like a semicircle like while, while sh shaking her hand for some reason that's stuck in my head and so like an hour later when i went to take a shower i was you know listening to to the fucking Higurashi openings, the one from the visual novel, and I fucking couldn't stop making that move whenever a fitting <laughs> fitting rhythm came in. <laughs> it's a sign. Oh, that's you adorable. gotta learn the whole dance now, I guess. It's, it's so fucking it's hard! There's well, like no fucking sequences there. Every, every, <laughs> every new fucking verse is a different move. Like It's just too hard. I, can do I mean, it. that's what dancing yeah. is. <laughs> exactly. Right. Plus, it's like a classic. Like, people used to just go do flash mobs at anime conventions with that dance. Uh, so it's like, <laughs> you know, all the, 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 the one of the best ones out there. Mm, Got it. Yeah, it's, it's a, a classic. It's a, um, yeah, a classic. Exactly. Mm. Uh, I'm thinking about anime oh, dances well. in public. It's, uh, I'm cringing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was at home. Oh. I was oh. on my shower. I wasn't in public. <laughs> Uh -huh. And I was also one at home, so yes, that's funny. I mean, Lorenzo, it's not that bad. But like, the whole point of going to anime conventions is to just like um, be right next to the most cringiest people possible, but so then you it's can true. feel less right. cringe about yourself. And then you like go outside yeah. of the convention premises, and then there's just like you know all these weirdos in anime costumes, oh, no. and you're like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lorenzo, have you been to? Anime uh, conventions yeah, before? I've been going. I mean, ever since I left high school i guess i've been going pretty consistently to this one local convention and it's great Aww. it's amazing except you know covid kind of threw a mm. wrench and all that but <laughs> yeah yeah um i i was actually really excited to go to magfest um, oh yeah music and game festival in mm -hmm. maryland but because of covid i couldn't go and i was like oh, oh i really wanted to go play their like endless um, arcade machines like yeah. arcade. arcade yeah hell yeah i actually know the one of the a few of the people who help run it um because they also go uh to my local convention as well oh really that's nice yeah yeah anyway we should start the actual episode now true Agreed. oh my god anyways 
on with the episode. Enough about ourselves. We're going to be talking about the murders of Rokinjima. Previously, we talked about... <clears throat> Previously, uh, on Umineko Book Club. <laughs> oh, wow. Why aren't you the host <laughs> with your... <laughs> With your golden Do you think voice. I can keep this up? <laughs> do you think I'm anonymous? I mean, some people can do that. I mean, yeah, if that's I try, anonymous. it's gonna sound it's gonna sound weird. Like previously on the Umineko Book Club podcast, <laughs> we're gonna talk about people getting murdered and uh, six people's bellies were sliced open, and Kenan and Jessica were murdered in her room. And I can't keep that up. That's stupid. <laughs> but yeah, wait, is is that what we talked about last episode? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, the adults were murdered. The bodies were discovered. Yeah. Cannon and go to chase Jessica to the VIP room that had Beatrice in it because she was going to beat her ass. But then she ended up getting murdered by the Golden Witch version of Beatrice, Beatrice, I guess, in her own room. Yep. And afterwards, Beatrice destroyed Cannon's body or at least made him disappear after she stabbed him with her demon steak anime girl and that's where we're at the um the survivors they come across Jessica's room and they enter the locked room with one of the servants master keys and immediately Rosa is like search the room make sure nobody's hiding in here this is sus AF. Wait, as the kids did we call get it. to that part? The, I don't think we did. We did, uh, kind of, because what? this is when I, I don't we, think we, we got to the part where Rosa and the gang go, go up to Jeshka's room. Uh, this is when I the think... battle of wits starts, when when they uh, bust out the red truth. Wait, huh? do we cover? Do we cover the whole part? We we cover the whole part about Rosa finding keys, right? Like how. She was looking for keys for the chapel. Wait, that, that already happened because that already happened. Oh my god! I Wait, don't remember. What? This is really episode difficult. two. Such a fucking mess. But this Wait, is no. what's in my notes. Unless Wait, did unless we get we to that part? Recording... Okay, let me see. I I don't think we got to that part. But if we did, then it seems I forgot to mention something on the last episode, which I mean, is we that you can go back. Go go ahead. No, it's just it's just it's very quick. It's just something I noticed. That's fucking. Interesting and funny, I guess. It's just that, like, before they go up to Jeshka's room, they, and they, they're, like, all gathered on the parlor. And then Kumasawa, who's late to the party, she just comes in after waking up because she likes fucking off fucking Kumasawa. That's, gonna, that's like, a recurring theme. Kumasawa just fucking swagging off. Mm-hmm. Fucking old hag. Oh, anyway. Oh, um, no, I'm being a stupid bitch, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys are right. See? I think we we started See? at the uh, um, the chapel red text discussion. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Well, let let me re- go back. Let me. <laughs> wow, well, we're a lot further back I than I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I mean, I have no idea why, but like the last two, like the wolf and sheep puzzle, the suspect, devil's proof. And, like, the latter four parts of EP2 takes, like, 15 years just to read for no reason. Like, you can breeze past, like, everything from the beginning of, like, chess for preparation all the way to Jessica and Canon, like, E. Mm-hmm. And then for some reason, it's, like, Wolf and Sheet Puzzles takes, like, itself, like, 10 years to read. Exactly. Because there's also, like, the element of you trying to figure out what's going on, I guess, if you're that active yeah. of, a re- of a reader at that point. But... Yeah, my friend basically st- like stops every five minutes to argue with me, and then <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, please stop arguing with me. Like the visual novel will explain it to you literally like th- like sentences later. Like. Right? Oh no, that's how I played. I was like, I was, I was like thinking things. I was t- chatting with the friend, saying, "Okay, this is what I think what will happen." And then like ten sentences later, they explain it in like a whole ass essay because that's how the. Umineko is written and I'm yeah, just like yeah. why my, <laughs> my friend was arguing because he read that part that was like oh like there's no like there's no way you can lock the door or like open the door and then my friend was like why can't they just lock pick why can't they just lock pick and I was like please mm. just wait but then like four sentences later like yeah. Beatrice is like lock picking are you fucking stupid like what kind of <laughs> story do you think this is and then my friend was like, why are you being so mean to all my theories? And I'm like, because, like, Liu Kishi will be 15 times more meaner than I am. Like, right? <laughs> 
Okay, so take two. We're not actually as far as we thought. Uh, Previously on the book club podcast, six people were discovered dead in a chapel, chopped Mm -hmm. open, blood Mm -hmm. spurting out, or guts pouring out, candy stuffed in their wounds. Rosa and the servants come across it. (gasps) She grabs the key that the 19th guest, Beatrice, gave Maria. Unlocks mm-hmm. the chapel. The cousins come across the chapel with the bodies in it as well. Jessica loses her shit. Goes to beat up the 19th person, Beatrice, but Goda and Cannon chase after them. Yep. We jump to Meta Battler and Beatrice uh, having an, an intellectual argument about the situation. So bust mm-hmm. out, or Beatrice busts out her new rules, which is the red text, which is... An interesting and unique storytelling element, which is the irrefutable truth that you, the reader, and the character battler cannot refute or um, must accept as truth. Like, it Mm -hmm. actually happens in the story, which is mind-blowing to me personally because um, it's wild because in storytelling, you usually take everything at face value. But with Umi Neko and its magic, you have to take a lot of things with a grain of salt. You Mm -hmm. just have to parse between what you read and what the author is explicitly telling you is the undisputed truth uh through red text it's a lot of there's a lot of mental gymnastics going on but i digress and as Um, you find out through butler's counter attack on that scene essentially the red truth is just a way like to get your thought it's just like a sentence you don't need to like to to explain why that is the truth so that you can jump some steps and get into the actual debating part exactly yes it's a guide it's a guide for you to um for you to keep your your mind on the right track when trying to figure out the mystery yeah my Hmm. friend actually said a really good thing about what he thinks the red truth is but like the red truth is basically just the, the word of god like it's like whenever the author comes in and just like says something, it's like that's just what yep. happens, and yeah, and so <laughs> it's we'll like die. it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating game mechanic, or just even just like story mechanic to introduce exactly. something mm-hmm. that's like absolutely true, like unrefutably true, irrefutably mm-hmm. Ooh, English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, I think so. Yeah, can't refute it. Cannot yeah, refute. It's... That's what I wrote in my notes. They're ir- irrefutable truths. Why don't we just jump to the part to the part of this episode? Where's th- wh- why are we covering what we covered previously? We're, we're fucked basically at this point. Let's just start from uh, the point where they return to do? the parlor. I think that's where where we should where we were supposed to start. I mean, so if you're reading, there's hella red truths. I wrote them down in my notes, but I don't think we should go over them like word by word, line by line. <laughs> um, nah. Let's let's keep going. Yeah. We haven't even got to any of the fun well, As parts I said yet. on the previous episode, you can just type red truth on, on Google and you you'll be directed to a wiki page that has all of them chronologically, so you don't get yourself spoiled. Right. Oh, but you also should not Google anything Umineko anytime. Like on if me. you have not finished EPA, have like absolutely finished everything, like Googling Umineko is a horrible idea. Like every meme every like a random google search will accidentally spoil you right so you gotta take your own notes so you yeah, need to be very Actually, careful <laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta dedicate as much as time and mental capacity as you can to reading umi Neko. take notes yeah everyone's fucked up from seeing a whole actual murder scene and kumasawa comes in and gets the 411 and starts freaking out and rosa is like i'm the man now dog i'm gonna go see kinzo right now and tell him exactly what's going to go down. She's going to take matters into own, her own hands. Mm. The witch Beatrice pops in and like lands on Rosa without her noticing. Like, yeah. Or as a, she turns into a little golden butterfly, she's like, "Ooh, I'm going to see what happens here, and I'm going to tag along and see Kinza with mm-hmm. Rosa." Uh, Kumasawa <laughs> offers Halloween candy for breakfast, but she can't leave yeah. the room, and everybody gets on yeah. the case. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> what I wanted funny. to mention. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck, Kumasawa? Like. <laughs> <laughs> right just to add insult to injury she's like i'm going to think of the most obscure thing to serve for breakfast that will probably trigger everyone I <laughs> no, don't because that's one. the thing she didn't she didn't know the, like what had happened but like how what the fuck she how did she manage to unknowingly hit the fucking nail on the worst fucking thing she could have said? <laughs> 
God fucking damn I don't it. know. I think the old lady's pretty <laughs> sus. Like... She single-handedly murdered everybody. <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay, well, yeah, she didn't show up until after all the bodies were found and everybody returned, and she's like, hey, how about some Halloween candy? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> was I not supposed to say that? <laughs> so, obviously, keep, keep an eye on her. She's kind of interesting, I'd say. Oh my god, um, on, on the note of Kumasawa, I find it so funny that, like, I don't know if you're reading it with voices on. I am. And, like, whenever this woman speaks... I, I know, like, five seconds earlier when she's going to laugh. Because, like, Kumasa has such a distinct speech pattern. You always know when she's going to laugh. That's so funny. That's really cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like her, oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, like, oh, uh, very... <laughs> <laughs> Like that. Like that. Uh, I, I get what you're saying. I, like, I wasn't thinking about it, and then you mentioned it, and I'm like, you're right. Kumasa is a, a very she sweet has, like, the most old distinctive woman. Last. But, like... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. That seems just very funny. AF. <laughs> Yo, don't don't be mean to Kumasawa. Come on. Or do. Anyone's a culprit at this point. Um, they all mention that they're trapped on the island during the typhoon. They can't escape and they can't communicate with the outside world. And that must mean that the culprit and or the 19th person is stuck with them as well. Oh, shoot. They talk about the culprit's MO, allowing everybody to see the body. And they wonder, hey, if I were a murderer, I would have concealed my crime as best as possible to avoid suspicion mm -hmm. but the late uh but they mentioned that the letter that bay to reach left behind did say that they were all going to get massacred so it was kind of like a. they probably they surmised that the culprit is going to kill all of them and Mm -hmm. uh, drive all the survivors into despair by seeing their dead family members but then they also mm -hmm. start thinking that it doesn't that wouldn't make sense because they could have just if they if they can't kill six people at once, that they could easily kill everyone else. So they just can't make head or tails of what the culprit's intentions may right. be. It's a it, it's a ritual killing. So that's kind of freaky, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose seeing six dead people before your eyes is pretty disheartening. <laughs> the servants bring up that Kraus only had one gold bar in his possession, but the chapel on the table where the dead bodies were had three. Mm-hmm. So they suggest that the witch and the legendary gold is real, and maybe it's a ploy to have them find out the gold for the culprit. Mm. Uh, did that make sense? No. Um, I think no, to, to... what they originally thought was that the culprit was trying to get everybody to solve the riddle for yep. them so they can find the gold, but it seems like at this point the culprit does have the gold. Yep. What possibly more could they yeah. want besides killing And that's everyone, like, kind of suspicious, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, why would they kill the parents who were the closest to knowing the solution? Yeah. But Maria comes up and says, that's not the motive. She's mm -hmm. here to be a witch and take us to the Golden Land. Shut up, Maria. <laughs> oh my god, Lorenzo! <laughs> why must you keep being mean to children? <laughs> ah, she sucks. <laughs> So Rosa returns with a gun. She's like, I heard Maria's talking shit. I'm no. going to teach her a lesson with her gun. No, not really. <laughs> but uh, she, oh my it gosh. seems that she, Genji, and Shannon return with Rosa holding a gun. Yeah. Every um, They're about to go to Jessica's room because Goto was a dumbass and left her and Cannon alone. And they arrive there with a creepy magic circle drawn on it and maria says it it's a rune or whatever that signifies that the user can magically unlock doors mm -hmm. Duh. they open the locked door with one of the servant's keys and they find jessica dead with a a stake yes yeah and oh yeah i was gonna mention this is the beginning part where uh rosa is like uh saying that this is all about the wolf and sheep puzzle she says uh, we're all going to go together because in the wolf and sheep puzzle, we are all gathered together here, like in equilibrium and the situation is at this most safe. And then that's very important right. for the rest of this EP. If they're going to spend all their time debating about wolf and sheep puzzles. Yeah. You think Butler didn't shut up about turning the chessboard around on the first episode? You just wait up until people start mentioning the wolf and sheep puzzle every three At this seconds. Point you'll realize that everybody has their own catchphrase. Battler with his chessboard. Rosa Maria with the wolves and sheep. The servants with furniture. No, 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 no. Like, you, 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 know, you know what Rosa and Maria's catchphrases are? Maria's is obviously the woo-woo. And then Rosa is the fucking 
thing she always says to Maria because every time she wants Maria to shut up with that ooh ooh thing she does, I don't know if it's a a translation thing, but like Rosa always says the same phrase. She always says, "Don't I always tell you to stop with that ooh ooing?" She always <laughs> says that. She says that like five times during the EP. Yeah. The more, Why the does she always say, say the same exact phrase? So I know the Japanese characters is like the ooh like character, but the way you're saying it sounds like Maria's just saying ooh ooh. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just, oh my God. Maria, fucking stop with the ooh ooh. <laughs> ooh ooh, ooh ooh, XD. Oh, Jesus. Wait, wait, I, Even more reason to hate her. That actually makes so much sense that, like, that, like, I. <laughs> Maria's just an online e-girl and she just comes to me and says like woo woo she's like raw I'm so edgy I want the witch to take us to the golden land XD <laughs> oh god oh was, like, no disgusting horrible she deserves everything coming towards her <laughs> no, no. no what the fuck Lorenzo Lorenzo <laughs> don't be mean to Maria she deserves it but anyways Rosa pins not. the blame on the servants for killing Jessica likely canon who is missing they can't find him especially since she was stabbed in the back with the demon stake and supposedly the last person she was with was canon so she probably trusted him and he stabbed her in the back though they can't deny he's also a victim without seeing his corpse so he's kind of in this like limbo of being guilty but also maybe he's also dead murdered somewhere else they can't really tell she order rosa orders everybody to see if he's hiding in the room and finds jessica's room key and we come across a red truth that says that all the servants have one master key. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Cannon was murdered in the room. The, the I think they also find his key on Jessica's person. So the oh yeah, that's later on. Just keep in mind that all the servants have a master key, so they have access to basically every room. Rosa agrees that Shannon and Genji cannot be the culprit because they were with Kinzo. <laughs> Um, and she fingers mm -hmm. cannon. <clears throat> Meta, <laughs> she fingers. Her. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> she. She. Yeah, that's a word. Don't be dirty. <laughs> she fingers him metaphorically and or physically, but we'll get to that. Meta battler goes on and saying that that's a filthy, filthy argument, Rosa. Stop fingering cannon. Uh, don't blame the servants. <laughs> she gets. Um, <clears throat> He kind of gets oh. he gets a mental block oh. and says that the only way to explain it otherwise is to accept that there's this 19 per person Beatrice is a witch and uh, conducted everything with magic. And he tries his best to deny the canon culprit theory because he doesn't want to mm -hmm. betray the ones he trusts, I guess, even though he only met this kid yeah. like <laughs> yesterday. Um, okay, okay, wait so a minute, Lorenzo, before, before you yeah. keep going. Before we jump on onto the meta world part and battle is yeah. discussing with Butler the whole canon thing, fucking they're, they're pointing fingers at each other and then like eventually the finger ends up on Goda and Kumasawa and like Rosa is saying that they it could have been those two servants and then Butler is like no it couldn't have been God and Kumasawa Kumasawa is funny and Goda makes good food it couldn't be them. <laughs> Right? Fucking what the fuck? But it's also really what? so desperate to yeah, so trust uh, to yeah. Um, my favorite part about this whole scene is that like basically Rosa is just holding a gun and she's just like frivolously pointing at at any like servants you can possibly find and she's like if it's not canon it's like it's Kumasawa and then Kumasawa and Goda's like oh it's not me and then it's like and then or it could be like Nanjo like all of servants, all of you are wolves, and like she's just so adamant about it and, and waving her gun around, and I just think it's very yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, right. and and then like the reactions those two fucking guys make, like God. First of all, God a sprite in this scene is like with his hands yeah. up, fucking scared out of his life, and then like Kumasa is just like a stupid smile on her face, and then it also doesn't doesn't help that their fucking voices sound like they're they're like the worst fucking actors ever, and they're like, oh no, we didn't we didn't kill this person. <laughs> That's funny. I just. This scene was so fucking weird. Yeah, and uh, meanwhile, oh on God. the scene, there's another thing that's actually happening that I still think it's kind of funny and weird, is that, like, well, like, 
uh, Rosa is like pointing out all these fingers and like saying that like servants has to be the culprit. Uh, you suddenly you switch like you see a scene where it's just like a transparent Jessica and transparent Canon, and they're like talking yeah. to each other, and then like Jessica's just crying and she's like, "Those guys, they're treating you as a culprit," and then Canon's like, "There's no way I can do anything. Like, there's no corpse." And then Jessica's like, well, you can't just treat people like culprits if there's no corpse. Like, that's, you risk your life to save me. It's so horrible. And then she, in the end, she has this thing which she's like, uh, uh, she's like, Rosa's saying that you're a culprit. And these people are saying you're the culprit, Canon Coon. They, so they can stop thinking. They aren't thinking mm-hmm. about who's a culprit who killed me is anymore. They're thinking the possibility is you aren't the culprit. And then, like, it's like they say all these, like, lines. And then, they're like, well, like, you know, like, now they're just going to blame you on anything. And Canon's like, it's okay. At least Milady knows the truth. And, like, that scene ends. And it's, like, the most random scene possible. Right? It never, well, like, stuff like not, that never comes up again. Like, Kumasawa's it's monologues, sad. too. I'm just like, what is the, is this bad writing? I don't know. It's, it's, it's something. Oh, I will say that. Yeah, we can get into it's it something. later in the spoiler discussion. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's such a weird scene. I agree. But Rosa just suggests that multiple culprits are after the gold, probably the servants, and that's why she suggests it's canon. And that's when the spooky ghost versions of Canon and Jessica show up, and they cry into each other's arms. <laughs> um, and they also mention that Beato, the nineteenth uh, person, does not have a master key, but could be complicit. Mm, Beatrice and Meta Battler cut in. She cackles at him. She says that Jessica had the master uh, master key from unlocking the VIP room. So Can- Cannon's key was in her possession because she tried to beat Beatrice's ass. Nanja checks the body and finds that key on her. Uh, Rosa yeah. won't let up that the servants did it. But Battler says that you can't pin the blame until there's a so- there's solid evidence. And Beatrice, meta Beatrice, applauds Battler's effort. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of more red text saying that there's no such thing as a hidden entry or exit way. Entryway? I don't know. There's no secret passage that can get you mm-hmm. in and out of the room besides the windows and the door, which was locked. Mm, yes. She, okay. There's a bunch Wait of, a minute. Oh, yeah, the reason, the reason they find the key on Jeshke. Let me, let me, okay, let me rebuild the scenario. So they are all leaving the room and then Butler is like, Ah, damn it. Zin, zin, damn it. And then Rosa is like, the fuck? And so, so like, they all turn back and they're like, so, so what is it, Butler? And Butler is like, nothing that's like, I'm thinking right now. And the, it's so like, the meta, the meta world comes in. Then Beato is like, oh, so what are you going to say? And then are you, are you going to like come up with some amazing theory to, to make to like to remove the suspicion on canon then butler is like man why did i speak up at a time like this <laughs> so so like, he just spoke up without a single thought in his head like, and i bet like this fucking man is I so fucking Dread stupid the grave is like playing the background <laughs> yeah so like butler just fucking improvised that shit and he came up with a solution right fucking there just this man <laughs> just, who the fuck is this man no, just grasping at straws. <laughs> like, and it also doesn't help that fucking Dread of the Grave, the start of Dread of the Grave sounds like a machine starting up. So it's it's like when Butler is starting the thing and it's like, it's just like Butler needs a bit of oiling on that machine because why the fuck would this man speak up if he didn't have anything to <laughs> like, say? Like, it takes a while like, for your computer to boot up like, and it like, and it makes the sound of like the windows, like windows, like... <laughs> <laughs> the little uh, dial-up yeah, sound. Yeah, exactly. But you come across the red text that suggests that there are no such thing as hidden doors and the only way in and out are the windows and doors, and it was locked. And also, Cannon was also killed in the room, along with Jessica. Uh, And Battler keeps having Beatrice repeat things in red to confirm his line of thinking, and one of the things that she refuses to repeat is that Cannon's corpse was also in the room. She says that he was re- erased with magic, and she will not. Al- she will also not repeat that the master key was recently used to lock the room as well. 
as in the key on Jessica's person wasn't used to lock the room, which is mm-hmm. you know, something to keep in mind. After he, like, asked this whole argument, Balor's just like, oh, I resign. Like, I don't know what to say right now. Like, he's just, like, taking a time out because he doesn't really know how to argue it so far, like, at that point, because the keys are all just, mm. like, busts. I was going to say, I, I like that scene because the way it's written is like Meta Battler is summarizing what happens. He says that Jessica and Cannon are dead. Cannon's corpse can't be found. Um, and he's trying to figure out how the room was locked. He wants to deny that the servants didn't do it. And he also wants to deny that it was done with magic. So he's conflicted yeah. that it could be one of the 18. It could be the culprit. And then he gives up. Meta Battler says resign. And then it also seems that the Roken Jima Battler also says resign. And George is like, who are you talking to? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I love that. Like scene. when the camera, uh, someone talks to the camera and he's like, what are you looking at? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happens. I know. I love that scene. It's just like, a, George is like, huh? Battler Coon? Like, what did you say? Like, it's such a funny moment. <laughs> right. And then they, Rosa and Battler just agree to like calm down and not finger anyone at the and moment. And they shook but they're hands. All, they're all on it. Like, my favorite part about that scene is when Rosa. A battler says sorry, and Rosa's like, I'm sorry too. And then Rosa shifts her gun to the other hand to shake his hand. Like, that's something, man. Like, she right. doesn't oh, drop exactly. the gun. I didn't notice that. <laughs> she still holds on to the gun. I mean, it's not like you're going to just drop a gun full of people. They're going to, it's like, you know, a sign that your guards let down completely. There's like a dead person in the room. <laughs> Somebody got murdered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyways, Jessica is confirmed dead and the perp is definitely on the islands. And the only solace is the promise of a boat coming to arrive the next morning and everything will be hunky dory, uh, sans the, everything's going to be died. Uh, battler suggests that they look for clues in the meantime about the culprit, but then Rosa says that it might lead to a third murder and convinces everybody to turtle and protect themselves instead. And Mm -hmm. they'll just sit tight until the next day. Yes. In the parlor, uh, Battler, George, Maria, Rosa, Genji, Goda, Shannon, Kumasawa, and Nanjo are the remaining survivors. Keep that in mind. That's a lot of people, but there are like nine people in that room. Rosa has the gun. The crimes were probably done through some underhanded means because there's no way Magic. that six people would go down without a fight, right? And the killer Magic. can't possibly be bold enough to pwn everybody with somebody in the room with a gun. That is if Rosa's not the culprit, I guess. Um, so they, and they also opt to avoid any food that wasn't canned because it could yeah. possibly be laced with poison. It hurts Goda's feelings a little bit, but he insists <laughs> that they at least use plates uh, to serve the food. Like, seriously. This man is so fucking <laughs> stupid. Like, right? There's a murderer afoot. He's like, I want to plate the food. And they're like, no, the <laughs> whole reason why we need to eat canned food is so that nobody can, like, put poison in it but yeah my favorite part about that scene is i just reminds me of that meme that i saw on tumblr and it's just go to like being like crossing his arm and being like huh you know all of these stupid closed room mysteries like magical murders is really souring my delicious food right now <laughs> okay you know what my favorite like... part about that scene is is that like rosa finally gives up and lets go that like plate the canned food but like the condition right. she puts on that is that Rosa must take a look at the food before God serves it and I'm like the fuck Rosa do you think you're just gonna see poison on the food <laughs> <laughs> like everything about it is just right. really funny the logistic of it is hilarious exactly you're, you're right like oh seven people or seven or eight people are dead oh man I still wish I could like cook for everybody <laughs> dumbass oh, Jesus hate him <laughs> Um, anyways, they're eating their canned plated food, I guess. Uh, Maria shows Battler the wolves and sheep puzzle we mentioned. Um, it's, in case you don't know, the wolves and sheep puzzle is somebody trying to get wolves and sheep across a river on a boat that only occupies, that can allow one, one or two, up to two animals plus the rower. And if you leave what is it if you leave more wolves than sheep on one side unattended on one side of the river no uh, wait i don't think the there's a rower the i i think one of the animals has to be the rower otherwise you could just <laughs> the, the boat could just go from one short sh- to the other without 
But we don't even want animal. Right. <laughs> they figure it out themselves. They just know to get across. <laughs> They're like, my goal as a wolf and or a sheep is to get across this river for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sheep. Like the first thought isn't them that trying to like eat the other or like avoid getting eaten. They're just like, I need to get across this river. The sheep. <laughs> look at me with my opposable thumbs holding this like orc to like go across the river (laughs) exactly (laughs) but um that's kind of the situation that the survivors are in now rose is implying that the the culprits or culprit or culprits are wolves and if you leave any number of culprits alone with an innocent they're gonna get owned and (laughs) murdered and killed And in Jessica's case, she was alone with Goda and Cannon, or just Cannon, and she sus- that's why she su- suspects them. All the serv- uh, She sends all the servants and Na- Nanjo to the kitchen to do dishes. And uh, so all the Ushirimiyas are left in the parlor, and Rosa suggests that it's the servants. She pins all the blame on them, and Battler thinks that it could be Beatrice instead, working alone. And he argues that in Jessica's murder locking the door with a master key uh, intentionally implicates the servants you know mm-hmm. like, obviously it's somebody who has the potential uh, capacity to lock a door in the first place but then rosa argues that if it was an unknown person they could have used some sort of like unknown method to lock the door without a servant master key and there's no other way you can prove it without showing evidence mm-hmm. which is you know a devil's proof mm-hmm. right like Okay, if another person unlocked the room that wasn't a servant, how did they lock the door? Yeah. Um, so it's more plausible to blame the victims, especially Canon, who hasn't been seen. Right? Yeah, and this is the part of the VN where it's basically just like big ideas upon big ideas, and it's just like word dump, like colossal, horror, humongous, like cubes, just like crashing. What are you getting, guys? So, like, Usually reading this part will just take you forever because every five sentence you're like, I need to go back and read that sentence again. It's like a five oh, sentence. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then they just bring up that Cannon's key was also locked in the room, uh, but he also could have locked the room from the inside, right? Uh, that's why Rosa ordered everybody to search to see if anybody was hiding after they come, came across the body. Uh, but he also could have left the room after everybody came in you know like <laughs> everybody's surprised by the body and he was just hiding behind the door and he just like snuck out like that also could be an explanation that happened or he could have used a secret passageway but we jumped to meta battler also considering and denying that line of reasoning of the hidden passageway because of the red truth saying that cannon was killed in the room um he proposes that there was a- another person in the room like the 19th person beta Riche, and had some sort of way of escaping the room without a key but as again, it, the Red Truth said that there were no secret passages. <clears throat> and Beater references Knox and Van Dyne, mm-hmm. which are famous mystery novelists. Um, keep an eye on those people because they're, they, they, they make an, a guest appearance, I guess. Kind of. Uh, there's another Red Truth that, that says that there are no hidden doors to the room. And the only way to get in and out was the door and window I mentioned before. So Rose's theory is wrong, but because... This is like a meta mm-hmm. conversation. You can't reason that with Rosa, which is like one of the most frustrating things about the story is that everybody on the islands on Rokunjima, they don't know all the red truths that Beatrice is yeah. spinning out. So the only way to get through to the characters on the island is to reason with them like you were having a conversation with them. So like if you had no idea that there was no hidden passage. That's kind of a confusing sentence, but the people on the island uh, and the reader don't have a way of communicating that there are irrefutable truths. Yes. So like anything could happen. You know what I'm saying? It's like one of the interesting parts of the red truth is that you as a reader know what's going on, but the characters, AKA the people who have the capacity to like, solve the murderers firsthand i guess who, who have a, so a like, s- what's like, magic who can affect the world i think that's what they're trying to say exactly your red truths and like what can be done through human means and what's magic and what can be done on like the witch's side kind of gets blended together because there's no real way to say hey this happened straight up mm-hmm. like this is how it could be explained with you know reasonable logic it's it's a whole kind of 
interesting storytelling yes. moment. But go back to the Ashura Mia's in the parlor for a second because Rosa reveals that she immediately blames Canon because she wanted to draw draw out reactions from the servants, right? Because if they suspect, if she suspects one of their mm. own, you know, they're probably going to freak out a little bit. And George is like, wait, you left Shannon alone with all the servants and I know she's innocent. But then Rosa accuses her of also being a wolf and George gets all offended and Battler says, <laughs> your mom would have said that too, <laughs> bitch. So <laughs> they kind of gang up on him, which is great. I love it. They just give him a uh. down. They're like, Shannon's a... One of the murderers, and he's like, "No, you can't, you can't blame Shannon. She's, she's my boo. I don't know." <laughs> but then Rosa vows to protect the remaining cousins at all costs and always keeps an eye on them. And Battler's saying that maybe it's also because you also think we're wolves. We're also wolves, I guess. And <clears throat> and he brings up the fact that Rosa totally could also be a culprit, and she's like. Oh yeah, watch this. And she freaking points her gun at him <laughs> and doesn't shoot. She's like, I couldn't I could totally wipe all you out right now and like tell the servants that some something else happened and it's the nineteen birth and Beatrice. So I can prove to you that I'm not the culprit and I could easily get away with it. She basically takes up the role the same role as not so he did in the previous kind episode of. where yeah. she's trying to protect all yeah, the cousins. Yeah, but that's very right? different. I that's why I like the difference between EP one and EP two. Like there's Natsuhi who's like more like a total mama bear who's like losing her mind and then she's like ah Jessica like I want to protect Jessica and she just like waves her gun around meanwhile like Rosa is like I have never had this much power in my yeah. life I have a gun in my hand <laughs> like I can order people to do whatever <laughs> and like she's just getting like the most intense power rush while she like, basically points her gun at her nephew and being like you know why I'm not the culprit because I have a gun in my hand and I can shoot you any moment if I possibly desire. And that makes me not the culprit. <laughs> Insane logic. Right. I also like she explained that she could kill Battler and then shoot the window to make it seem like he got shot from the outside. But like there were two other people in the room, right? Like I guess she could have threatened George, but he's kind of a pussy. <laughs> well, she would kill George as well then. Under, yeah, under and then her. she'd just keep Maria. Like right. yeah, exactly. I guess she would, what like, would Maria say? Like it's, Maria wouldn't care. <laughs> she would go she would go like ooh ooh <laughs> baby <laughs> jammer, right? <laughs> XD Rar. <laughs> Maria would be like, haha this episode's um, really funny. Because, like, she's watching... She's watching that's Higurashi so random, Mom. TV, I can't like. believe you. Yeah, I mean, like, this is not even the right. first time, <laughs> technically speaking, that she was present for a murder. Like, in EP1, she, like, stood in the room where, like, three people got murdered brutally. Mm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We jumped to Meta Battler saying that he's still trying to suss out the culprit. The line of thought currently points to one of the 18 being on the island, and he kind of forgets... The, he kind of tosses the 19th person theory out of the window and he he's freaking out. He's saying, why why won't the culprit pop up all grandiose like and say, haha, it was me all along. And then the innocents are like saying, prove it. And uh, Beatrice, Meta Beatrice kind of like plays along with him and he's like, yeah, um, wait, sorry. I'm like losing my track of thought because like. The way it's written is really confusing, but isn't, the exchange is really what... funny because Sorry, he's like, because I... hmm? he says, why doesn't the culprit come out and say it was them all along? And then the innocents are going to, you know, try to draw out an explanation. They're going to say, where's the evidence? And then Beatrice reaches like, hey, here's the evidence. Oh, and you then she's, she says or in not. red that I am <laughs> the culprit. I am the culprit. I am the culprit. Is that is that? that part i uh, did did she do that I, I think it was like again I it's feel really like confusing, we are having such a hard time explaining time, the joke like, that it, come out and ask. Really, this this child is dying in our hands then it's the longer we're like looking at it the fat like the more it's dying i think we need to move on <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh god well that, that goes to show the writing is kind of bad i'm just saying it's funny what? but also like <laughs> renzo renzo it's so hard to convey because like it, the way that's it's because is... that's because it's a fucking visual novel it has visuals bad, and music a poorly and written effect, visual but... novel <laughs> I, Renzo, I think you have to reevaluate your opinions i, I do I'm oh, really whatever. exciting i'm really excited huh? that one day we can possibly draw like a you know how like political compass but it's for umineko like or not umineko but like for seven expansion <laughs> stuff 
Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. What would the axis be? The axis would be really yeah, like, 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 as in like, um, a Higurashi is the best, Umineko is the best, Higurashi is the worst, Umineko is the worst, or like basically, so like to put people on axis because I could definitely see that I exist more on the I really like Umineko but I don't really care about Higurashi. Oh no! And then Lorenzo's like I do really like Umineko but it's kind of trash anyway. Like <laughs> no, I think I hate all of them. I'm in like the far <laughs> corner. I'm like one of those corner people, you know. I'm on like, the I'm on the ups. Ups. I hate both. But but I read them. <laughs> I'm like on the absolute corner of like all loving all of them, but like I love Higurashi slightly less than Umineko, but it's like on that corner. I'm on that corner. Yeah. Got you. We're, we're on opposite corners, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I hate these. I hate the stories I spent 600 I hours think, reading. I just, I, this <laughs> and... is my problem about Umineko is that I think there is a crime to writing a story too long so it's in a sex in ex, um inaccessible to other readers yes. like huh? how would mm-hmm. i possibly introduce a life-changing story to a person if i'm telling them that they have to spend at least 160 hours on it at, like minimum because there's a good story hiding within un- all the yeah. fluff right it's just that it has such a high entry okay. point. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a learning high curve. High entry point but is... Okay, I have a question for you guys end. then. Yeah. Do you, Would you think you'd like Umineko as much as you do, if not for all of this fluff that Umineko yes, has? Yes, I would. Oh, I no, you wouldn't. I would oh love God. it. No, you I, wouldn't. I, love, no, you I wouldn't. love the manga version. I, like, love the manga version. Like, if, if Umineko... The end was paced just like the manga version. No. I would recommend okay. it to way more people. Exactly. Okay, mushroom, well, mushroom. You love the manga like version the ma- because you have you have v- like memories with the VN, and you love the VN <laughs> because the VN is so long that that whether you want it or not, you're gonna grow attached to the VN simply because it is so long. So that's you wouldn't not, like Mineko as much as you do. Syndrome. That's, that's a <laughs> exactly. false policy. Like you can't say that. Like you can't just be like, well, too bad. You have to love it now because you spent 160 hours on it. Like <laughs> that's just super mean. Okay, I um, have an, I have to... another argument then. The first episode in the manga fucking sucks. That pacing, what the fuck? How do you want to someone to start to mineko with the fucking manga? That just no. The, the people Wait, are gonna read I the first chapter read... and drop it. What, what's what's wrong with the first if you want manga? Are you kidding me? Okay, the first episode on the manga it starts on the fucking boat ride scene. It lasts like two pages, and then we're on the mansion, and then like on the next chapter it's already the next day. Like what the fuck is this pacing? It's called good pacing. It's called <laughs> amazing pacing. <laughs> exactly. It's even worse than the anime. Not to mention, not to mention the fucking. There are like incest jokes on on like the fifth page of the manga. Do you think people are gonna give the manga a second chance when they finish the first chapter? No, they're not. <laughs> uh, I, see, I see. Anyway, are, are we gonna continue or should we just go on to spoiler now? Well, I feel we're like... actually mm-hmm. really close to. Oh, okay, fine. We will stop at my trying to poorly explain this poorly written joke. <laughs> 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 okay, but like I will say, it was. When I read it, it was really charming because he's like, uh, Beatrice, or like, oh, culprit, come out. And then Meta Beatrice is like, haha, it's me. <laughs> okay, see, that's a way better way that's, of explaining Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I said. Like, Butler was like, come on, Beato, just show up and say it's you so that we can stop suspecting each other. And that Beato in red just says, I am the culprit, I am the culprit, I am the culprit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The tro- the that's the way I remember it, at least. <sighs> well, anyway. Anyways. So for those of you who are still reading the visual novel for the first time, thank you very much for listening listening to us ramble and spread out commentary about what we've been reading. But we will now be continuing into spoiler discussion. So um, log off if you haven't read past this point or finish the whole visual novel because we will spoil the whole thing from this point on. See ya. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, see cats, do crimes. Catch you next time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what was spoilers. It? Answers, and then now we can discuss spoilers and stuff. Yay! All right, welcome back. Woo! We are going to go into spoilers. Uh, it was Sayo. They did everything. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. That's so mean. 
Sucks to you if you stuck around, I guess. <laughs> but that doesn't even make any sense. That's what I mean by, like, I'm pretty sure, just on a really random note, uh, I don't know if this is 100% true, but I I have memory of accidentally spoiling myself of a very crucial thing about the culprit when I was reading Rumi mm. because I read a wiki because I'm an idiot, and mm-hmm. then still was just shocked when I got to the end. But still, saying oh, Sayo did it, it's yeah. like the most confusing thing possible. It makes you think that there is a 19th person, like an actual physical extra yeah. body. Okay, I had the similar first. experience, Mushroom. Because like, like my friend told me, like, like just random, we were talking about, I don't fucking know what, and they just turned to me and say, Sayo is the, uh, Yasuo is the culprit. Now I'm like, what the fuck? I'm on, what? But wait, who is, <laughs> wait, who which, is Yasuo? Wait, what uh, EP were you on? No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like, oh my, I can't believe you spoiled me. Wait a minute, who the fuck is Yasu? Because I, I think I was like <laughs> on episode three. <laughs> is that the same person who revealed that like there were actually like adult uh, identity yes. thing going yes, on? Yes, but or? but I, that was a, a real Come spoiler. On, that, that's, that's, horrible. A, that's, a, that's a bad friend. That's a horrible friend. <laughs> you should, like, a good Umi Neko reading companion is a reading companion that would make fun of your theories no matter they're right or wrong and never like and be and you're supposed to be a witch with them like the, that's the whole point like what is the point of reading Umineko with somebody else if you're just gonna be like hey I'm just gonna tell you the answer like that's cheating that's a goat move <laughs> I don't know I, I don't know what went through their head your friend right now. I don't know what the fuck happened there There's but I remember now. after that Yasu thing they <laughs> said okay. like Oh, that's just a meme in Japan. Like, Yasu is the culprit. That's just a meme in Japan. And I think it actually is. But, like, still. No, I bet your friend realized what they said. They're like, oh, shit, I spoiled the whole thing for you. Yeah, but <laughs> after after the Shikanon thing they spoiled me, they said, like, uh, what the fuck is... How did you not figure that out yet? They're ne- they, they are never I seen mean, together. So, what? I, that's so mean. That is right? so mean. That's, I, I'm, I'm actually more mad than before now. Like, what, how, right? like, what part were you on at that okay. point? In their defense, I don't recall what part I was on, but in their defense, I also don't remember what part they were on. I remember they hadn't finished the Minex, so in their defense, maybe they still hadn't gotten to the answer yet, and they were just voicing their theory as if it was the truth. I don't know. That seems don't know. pretty That's sus. That's so mean. I would, like, that is absolutely mean. I think, like, you should never say shit like that. Like, yeah. oh. Yeah, yeah like, unless you are reading with them and you are coming out ideas with them on the spot. Like, you should never say shit like... Like, propose the answer as, like, a theory so you can, like, I don't know, what, sound smart, yeah, I guess? Like that's it's so... it's kind of... It's it shit. Yeah, and it's also it just, like, it robs you of the shock because, like, if yeah. anything, like, Umineko's all about that, like, gradual shock that you're gonna get. Like, I knew Shikannon was a thing probably in question arc like midway through question arc because i actually read a wiki or like i think when i was beginning of question arc and i didn't still didn't understand what that meant like i didn't understand like what does that matter if she is the same person like right. why would that mm. affect the murder it's the kind of thing anyway let's talk exactly. about what we just covered i don't think okay. we covered that much at all i want to talk about okay. jessica's room Okay, talk about this. Yeah, okay. there's tons to unpack. Like, what were you thinking when you were trying to solve it? Or, okay, I first guess. things first. There's, like, this closed room on episode th- five, I think, that is, like, it's, like, a, um, a circle of closed rooms that have, like, a sequence. And, right. like, yeah, the yeah, key I to breaking that. that sequence is that Rudolf, he, he didn't find the key. He just placed the key there and pretended to find it. And that was, like such an eye-opening moment and, and like every time a closed room happened from there on and also on this reread i always get back to that one and i'm always like okay who the fuck found the envelope so like on this on this uh closed room the one who finds the envelope um not the envelope the key yeah yeah the, the one who finds the key to jeshka's room is fucking rosa and like, right. so, so, so like that's that's almost proof that Rosa is in on it. If the rest of the episode wasn't enough, exactly. I mean, there's gonna be really obvious shit about how she's in on it. There's gonna be a later where basically there's a letter of Beatrice randomly shows up in the room, yeah, and then like Rosa freaks the fuck out and ends up screaming at Balor about how he's the one who put it in. And I'm like, dude, there's only three people in the room. There's like you. <sighs> Rosa, like there's like you, 
Battler and Maria. I don't even know where George is. I think, oh, George is with Shannon at that time. Mm-hmm. There's like three people. So like, there's only three options that who threw down that. Bullet. I mean, she's also the one with the gun. So her voice. Is yeah, more yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, on that fucking also, scene, so that, many that scene is so fucking shocking. Like, the moment Butler finds the letter, you could feel, you could feel his desperation. He was like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> no, no, my favorite part about that scene is basically after he realized he picked up the letter and then read it and then Rosa just basically screamed at him with a gun at his face. He's like, you know what, I'm leaving, yeah. I'm gonna get a drink. That's We'll cover that, like, maybe next yeah, time right. or... Yeah, yeah, we'll cover but that. But it's, it's such a hilarious scene because, like, Balor's just like, you know what? I'm, like, 18 years old. I'm gonna get a fucking... I'm gonna head yeah, out. Yeah, I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna go get, like, some alcohol. I'm gonna get <laughs> slammed drunk. Like, this is fucking yeah. stupid. Oh, There's, like, boy. a bunch of other scenes oh. that... Uh, happened in the summary that we explained where Rosa's is really suspicious as well like when she like tries to nip, nip the uh bud in investigating the crime scene she's like no it's safer if we stick together which is exactly what Hideyoshi and Ava did in the previous episode so you know you can like kind of tell like who's trying to mm. control the situation and who's like you know the uh the main uh I guess what is it the main is it a gopher a groundhog a mole the mole uh, a compass the the person who's working colluding with ah. the culprit like the closest and mm-hmm. you know trying to execute the true culprit's demands yeah i think it's very interesting analyzing rosa's actions because there are a lot of times that rosa just very conveniently says or does something that like in hindsight like on a secondary read it's extremely favorable for like for Sayo, who's planning this whole thing. So, like, for example, Rosa instructing everyone to search the room so that Butler knows for sure that no one mm-hmm. was hiding. So, like, and, and I feel like uh, like when Rosa goes up to Kinzo's study, supposedly to meet up with Kinzo, and then he isn't there and they come up, come back with the gun, I think that's when Rosa, uh, Shannon, and Genji, when, like, when Sayo tells Rosa exactly how she, she should act. I think she was already a, an accomplice by that point, but I think that's when Sayo instructs Rosa right. on what to do. Oh, and on a really funny note, um, so this is something that my friend who's reading EP2 screamed at me about, is that he was really pissed that... So, in the very beginning, Rosa and Maria is in the Rose Garden. Uh, Beatrice shows up and give both of them, like, each a letter. Like, she gives one to like mm-hmm. Maria, one to Rosa, and the Maria letter is the one that they opened for the chapel. But the rest of the story, like she even mentions it later, she's like, "Oh yeah, I should re- remember to open the letter." But she never opens that letter, like because the dinner scene never right. happens, so she never opens the letter that she was supposed to read to the family. So that's my question. Mm. What do you think? Oh, is I in think that, that was the letter like, that led them to the chapel. Or, yeah, oh. because I think what actually happened, like, you know, at the end of the scene, right before the murders happen, all Beatrice is supposedly showing them the gold and they all believe her. That was, you know, her calling card to, like, send them to the chapel. And then that's presumably when they yeah. get murdered. Oh, yes. so, you like, know? did, mm, so did Rosa that just, like, sense. actively participate in, like, helping to set up yeah oh, okay because afterward afterwards well i think i mentioned it in the previous recording she there's a line that says this this was like a gruesome murder scene but it was also strangely beautiful mm-hmm. because she fucking hated her siblings she also helped orchestrated it and she has the promise of like obtaining all the gold for yeah herself. so she's like oh, that's so good all the stuff is coming into place yeah. you know it's it's really subtle but also when you get the truth revealed to you you're like oh it's not like it came out of left field this was like all a build up. It was all her. I mean, not all her, but like she's she's doing a pretty bang up job of carrying out most of the murders. You yeah, know. Yeah, and like, I also love I love the very specific like how she's immediately suspicious of the uh, servants. Like, what's is that like a role that she was playing, or she was just yeah? Like, yeah, it was a role. I think I think she was playing the role of guiding Butler's thoughts towards exactly. the truth. Because the servants, we mentioned this before, she addressed. Um, was it Cannon and Shannon in front of Goda? So there's no way that they're not, the ah. servants are also not yeah. on it. Yeah. Exactly. And she also talked to Nanjo, like without saying anything, that also, you know, somehow convinced him to go to the kitchen as well. It, it was presumably because she was like saying, 
hey, I'm trying to get Battler on my side or, you know, George and Battler on my side. Go away so I can tell them to suspect all the servants and, you know, get them off our mm. backs in the end, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But Nanjo, you know, just agrees without putting up a fight or... I don't know. It, it, it's weird because if you consider that everybody, all the servants and Nanjo were in on it, obviously, mm-hmm. it gets kind of weird. I think Obviously. I think Nanjo and the, like at least Nanjo and yeah Nanjo, I think Nanjo thought he was gonna survive till the end right because she... like Nanjo is always one of the characters who survives um up until the later Twilight mm-hmm. so I don't think he would go along with it like without feeling nervous if he didn't think he was gonna survive right she probably said something like keep an eye on the servants or stay out of this so i can you know convince the children to like calm down i don't know it's that that's what i'm hung up on because if she's orchestrating most of the most of the uh setup you know she has to she she's got some 40 level chess going on in her mind she does I think that's kind of crazy. I'm excited when we get to the latter parts because there's just so many very specific things about Rosa and her actions in EP2 that's way more interesting on hindsight than like straight reading right. it. Mm-hmm. Because my friend is like, my friend is currently reading EP2 and he was like, oh, I thought you said there was good Rosa moments. And I said, I didn't say it was like good Rosa <laughs> moments. I said it was good Rosa moments. So like there's really quality moments, but she's just like, being the absolute like maniac she is. Good moments as a character, not as a person. No, Good exactly. moments as and she beats the shit out of Maria now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just really it's kind of insane that she basically she's like, I have a big stick and this big stick is a gun and you just do whatever <laughs> I say. And right. I will win against any argument I have because I have a gun. <laughs> yeah, I also okay, so I scrolled back in my notes and I found the parts that also really stuck out is when Rosa goes to see Kinzo with the servants, and also when Golden Witch Bay Teriche turns into a golden butterfly and lands on Rosa, like she's mm. controlling her, maybe Ratatouille style. Yes, I think that's like a hint towards like, Yeah, Rosa is definitely a, a, like an accomplice by this point. Right. But it also, the way it's written is like, oh, Rosa's doing this without Beatrice noticing, but it's more like she's working with Beatrice, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Yasu, Sayo, whatever, but is also unaware of, you know, the great, the biggest picture, which is, you know, I'm blowing up the islands because I fucking hate all of you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's really, really interesting. This is when we get to the end of EP2, but like, I think in the end of EP2, Rosa suddenly realized what the fuck is happening. That's why she's like panicking and trying to escape the island. That's why she's like, the island is not safe. Ah. Because mm-hmm. like, sh- I mean, wait, I have a qu- This is a very, very big question. I know we haven't gotten this part yet, but I just have to ask because I don't remember. Does... Does Shannon die in EP2? I think she does, she does. right? I think she kills she herself. herself in the head. I think she kills yeah. herself. Wait, is this EP2? Yeah, so, so okay, so the next murder that's going to happen after Goda and Kumasawa's murder, not Goda, sorry. Uh, Nanjo. Nanjo Kumasawa? Kumasawa's murder is uh, Goda, J- Shannon, and George. And, George. and yeah, Shannon yeah. is going to be shot in the face. Like, not shot in yep. the face, but stake in the face. It's like shot in the face at the table, like at mm-hmm. a at a desk. Yes. And I mm-hmm. think it's later on explained in the manga that she like looped the gun or like she like yes. loop the gun around to shoot her in the face. Yes. But so I think when Rosa realized that Yasu's dead, right. like the utter panic in her is like she's like, oh fuck, I got like seriously played. Like how am I going to get off this fucking island? Oh. Do you think so? Oh, I think like she would still scene, think yeah. that Genji would at least help her in the end. Right? But Genji didn't. Genji just fucking, like, drifted around right. the house and was just like, whatever. <laughs> like, Genji, like, really did not care. Like, there was, a, there was great moments where, like, Genji just, like, wandered the house and just found a drunk Balor and was just like, hi, kid, like, wanna come hang out? Okay, oh, here's the thing. I don't know. Butler was drunk at that point. So he could... Butler sees fucking butterflies and all of that shit still on the game board. So, like, I could, it could also be argued that Butler also imagined Genji going there. So, like, you could argue that after after that whole thing between Rosa and Butler, Rosa went up to Genji 
Genji told her like, uh, up until midnight, I'm still Sayo's servant, so I can't tell you anything. Rosa kills Genji and then tries to leave the the island. Oh, that makes a lot. That could make mm. a lot of sense. And like, because Balor is drunk, you could just imagine anything. And like, that makes sense. I was gonna say, I my original thought is that the reason why Balor could see golden butterflies is because he is. Um, it's right before he's dying, but like that makes ah, sense that he could also yeah, that, see it because that, he's drunk. Yeah, but your explanation also I guess makes sense. We, yeah, I think we are a little bit shooting overboard because we're just talking about things that are gonna happen. Okay, but... yeah, going back to the episode. Okay, so what do you think happened in what do you think happened in Jessica and Can like Cannon's murder? Oh, straight up, Cannon. And... Okay, yeah, so straight up. Jessica is in a room crying, and she's like. Oh my god, my parents are dead. The 19th person mocks me in a scathing letter. That, that Cannon, I was stupid. Right? Cannon's like, oh, I'll be in the next room. Uh, just just cry it out. And then, mm -hmm. um, how would I say? I think he does console her a little bit. And then just shoots her in the back. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then plants and then both of his keys. In there. He has two keys because he has Shannon and... Shannon and, keys and... Yeah, yeah. And so Cannon this keys, is right? my thought. So... He puts uh, Cannon's key in her pocket, locks with Shannon key, leaves. The end. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly easy, what happens. Easy murder. Like, it's kind of hilarious. Oh, so yeah, could we talk about the random ghost scene? Like, yeah, <laughs> what's fucking... that about? <laughs> that and the monologues. I'm just like, is this... I, 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 okay, so it definitely convinced me that, you know, there is a magic element going on. I'll admit that. But, like, the way it was just kind of shoehorned in, sort of, I was like, you could have easily just said, I could hear them crying. Like, you could say, you could no. even say, would they cry? Like, in the sentence, just in one sentence, it just like, oh, like, if only they were. Okay, so Renzo, but that I think scene the might... way it's written. Mm, come on, you don't like. That, that was kind of. That was important. Well, I guess. I think it's Kind of ran like I think it's kind of it random is. because we don't see we don't see like ghost people talk about their own death that much. Right. I can't even think of an exact scenario when it happens again. I I like yeah, it. it. I also think it like it it hammers home the whole like Canon and Jessica ship. But I'm just the way it was just kind of put in there. I'm like. Mm. Oh, I don't know. yeah. My friend, my friend brought up a really funny point when we were reading that scene. Uh, my friend wrote this, which is if this whole thing, like everything about like the magic is more happening in Battler's head, then Battler would rather imagine that Cannon protected Jessica from Goat Chad <laughs> and having a sweet scene in the afterlife than actually imagining that Cannon had killed Jessica in Cold War. Right. Oh, that's that's a good. And I thought that was a very, very profound. Interesting. <laughs> Your friend's mm. a, the activist reader. <laughs> The most active reader. <laughs> oh, oh, no. My friend, um, I currently have a, let's see, 15-page document of reading, like, of just, like, of a Google Doc of, like, just oh, Jesus. On we could just read that for the podcast. And this is, like, like <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. I'll ask him if I can use some of these because these are really hilarious. Like, one of the other things he said was, Canon is the new Beatrice because, like, right after Canon quote-unquote died uh like basically uh rosa says that she would just basically blame every murder on canon now because we don't see canon's mm. body and i was like oh my god that's so true Damn. Like, he's just like canon is new beatrice yeah that's a, a um, very I good way to talking. think when tackling umineko them yeah it's just really funny because my friend is very like active reader and he really wants to figure this thing out. And while like he he thinks it's like he's really wrong, he writes all these thoughts and he's like, I don't know which one is right. And I'm like, just write all of them down. I will tell you which one. Like you can catch them out later. Like it's just so good. And he he's so fairly confused about like the chessboard metaphor and he doesn't really know like. Beatrice is supposed to be the game master, so like he's like, this is kind of like D and D. Kind of. <laughs> like, and I, I agree. Like, it's kind of like D and D. It really is. I, I mean, your friends playing in the way that I wish I did on my first time around, because like every single magic element thing that they threw at me, just like I internalized it. Went it, over it imprinted on me. Uh, I, I was see. like, okay, ghosts are real. Um, magic stakes real. Magic Barra Goats, real. Demon Steak Anime Girls, real. Just, like... <laughs> yeah, um, so that's actually funny. Like, yeah, my friend writes crazy amount of things. Like, this is another thing he wrote, which is, the murders have been super airtight. Is it presented like nobody could do it? Then it actually means that anybody could have done it. 
And I was uh, like, oh, deep. that's another very... <laughs> that's... <laughs> like, exactly. He also has played a lot of Phoenix, mm-hmm. right? So every time, like, Battler does the ham pointy <laughs> dread of the grave, he's just like, this is just a yeah, Phoenix, right? Uh, moment, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Especially with, like, like, the blue background, you know, kind of parallels with, like, the Phoenix right face close-up yeah, exactly. thing. But I think... Ah. Well, I was, mm-hmm. was going to say the... Um, your friend basically disproved of the magic that they really like to throw out there because, you know, in the end, it's embellishment of the story. And at first, I also thought that's what magic was, but it took me until like episode four to like muster up the courage to say that to my experienced Umineko friend who like convinced me to read the thing. I'm like, is magic just like lies? Because that's what it feels like at this point. And he's like, <laughs> magic's magic. I mean, uh. I think confused because he doesn't understand the difference between two kind of magic so he thinks all magic is the same which is what i mean by like the magic that revives everybody every episode is the same as the magic where murders happen Mm. but that's two kind of magic like you know what i mean so like what he's thinking he's like well magic has to be real so time loop could happen but magic couldn't be real because murder right. is done by people. So he's really confused on that part. I think that's why there's a whole section in this document, which is just called, what the fuck is going on with the premise? <laughs> and then, so it's the first bullet point says, if this is a time loot, a fantasy mystery, then you don't need to explain anything. Seven stakes killing people with magic totally makes sense. But if magic doesn't exist, then the whole premise doesn't exist. As in like, if magic doesn't exist, how the fuck right. is time loop? Yeah. Like, so he's really confused. Like, how is magic happening? And like, and he hasn't read what is the Higurashi end prior, right? No, yes. This is the perfect part. Yeah. He has not read Higurashi. I'm like, this is... It's, I was I was asking, I, like, right before we started the story, I was like, hey, what kind of time loop story have you read? And Because I think if you have read another previous time loop story, this will be easier. And he's like, uh, he says, I read, he was like, oh, I read a Ruby fanfic that's a time loop. <laughs> and, like, he also read, I forgot what was the other thing, maybe, like, Groundhog Day or something. <laughs> and, like, well, Groundhog Day in the movie. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, no, this is going to be extra hard for you because time loop stories are like like umi nico plays on the idea of time yeah, loop but stories it's not a not real knowing... loop you know it's no it's not yeah. that's the whole point uh, it's so it fucked good me up in that... totally it fucked me up <laughs> totally and he just was introduced to burn castell and mm. lambda so i had to explain to him that like these two characters are supposed to be referenced to higurashi and like the games that they're talking about playing are ref- are referenced to other games that like Ryukishi wrote and mm. he was like okay I don't know what that means but sure mm-hmm. but yeah All right. Um, is there any other thoughts yes. on the wolf and sheep puzzle thing ah, not on the wolf yeah. and sheep puzzle but like on, on Eva uh, dying because the, you see me and Mush were discussing on the other day about like the fact that Eva dies on the first episode and how because you point this out, right, Mushroom? Why does Eva die on the first episode if she's alive, as we find out at the end of episode three? So, like, we came to the conclusion that it was probably because of the fact that Sayo wrote the first episode. Like, maybe not the whole episode, but, like, the premise. And like, Yeah, okay, so, yeah. She wouldn't oh, know. That makes she sense. wouldn't so... know that Eva would survive. And so, like, that could indicate that the second episode was also built upon a message bottle that was found instead of being written from the ground up. Yeah, let me explain a little bit more. So what I was arguing is that in the ending scroll of EP1, it says, oh, Ushinomiya family murder is also oftentimes called the 18-person murder. And then I was like, why is it called 18-person murder? Because that's not 18 people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, they, like not, not actually 18 people died. Like, Eva who is a public survivor like shouldn't have been counted in the 18 so then we decided that even the scroll that you think it's supposed to be written quote unquote in the future is Mm. written by yasu in the past like that's like that's like the last page of the message bottle like everybody died or maybe not like or maybe it was just like it's just her imagining what would people react when people get the bottle okay Mm. i also will say when you mentioned the 18 person murder i remember seeing that and that made me think there was a 19th person because how did how did ava make it out (laughs) so that messed me up as well (laughs) stupid god (laughs) but like the 
it's so confusing. Like, it's so ridiculously, stupidly confusing. Right. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense, right? Yeah, doesn't. exactly. Because, cause, like, when they introduced the future, I was like, wait, what's going on? Why is, you know, Angie old? Why is Ava alive? Why is all this happening? Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it it just gets really confusing for a first time reader. And then looking back on it, it's almost genius. I mean, it is genius, I guess. Because, like, the way it makes you believe episode two makes you think in one direction and then episode three comes along and it makes you think in like different directions like how if it how is you know ava the culprit how did she you know be two people at the same time yes. how how did she make it out of the island just all that and then episode four just like you know throws you in for a bigger loop and then you know the big reveal tea party in episode seven i think when when you know the yes uh, will battle quote unquote with actually happened quote unquote battle it's not an actual battle the, yeah the, yeah the performance by claire when you know rudolph and curie you know oh you're talking <laughs> about that part. House and, oh okay 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 uh, yeah i'm just i'm just like you know trying to sort my mind through like how going through the first time the many different directions you go through like imagining what's going on mm-hmm how to separate magic from the quote unquote reality yes. and you know thinking how are these loop loops not actual loops working because characters who are dead show up again and things play out differently and it's always just like i don't know <laughs> it's I, I can't articulate it also it's that, it's i that just good. i uh, just I because i was curious because you know how we were talking about how in one they has an ending scroll that explains like oh in in the future people are gonna pick this up and say like this is like the 18th like there's like 18 people murder so then i checked mm-hmm. vp2 they don't say anything like that they just say like oh like and then the murder happened and this is what happens to it like it's just saying like oh the rest of the story is not to be told like yeah they, they don't flesh really, it out like, they don't say anything about the future like they don't say it at all and then mm. if you go and read the ep3 ending basically that like there literally is like the scroll is super short and it just says all the golden land once again crumbles away into darkness however one winner finally emerged in the golden witch's game and the person is eva beatrice all seven people died the end like like it's super what? weird it's like the shortest fucking scroll yeah you should if if anybody's well, curious that, that would be the first the first like story that Ikuko and Toya was right from the ground up yeah, exactly. Like so, that's the yeah, exactly. That's the first. They're just story starting out. Ikuko and Toya writes. Yeah, I, then I think that's so funny, and I don't even think EP four has a scroll. I can't. I didn't even find it yet. Like EP four just ends with like, like flashing text of like, please kill me quickly. Like yeah, and that's it. Yeah, it's crazy. That's so ridiculous. I didn't I think... realize how different between each EPs are until I like revisited question art. Was it EP four mm-hmm. that was all in Toya Battler's head? He's like he figured it all out at that point. Or uh, yes, yes. I say well, mm. I say in EP four he's close enough, and then EP five is when he reaches the full uh, full understanding of the whole truth and that's why he becomes like the, the game master sorcerer. got you yeah the game master of ep7 ah that makes sense yeah. I, right. I i feel yeah well we'll get i was there. like i was so uh i mean okay so when i anecdote when i finished episode four and like started episode five i realized that this is the part where basically if you read Higurashi, you'd understand the situation more clearly and probably be able to figure out the whole thing. And then when they turn Battler into a game master, I'm like, oh shit, is this supposed to mean that I was I um I was supposed to figure out absolutely everything that happened in the first four episodes? I felt like really dumb. Mm. Cause, you know, the author yeah. is basically saying, Hey, you know, you should have figured it out by now. Beatrice is like gone. Battler's in charge, you know. Friendship ended yeah. with Bay Teriche. Now Battler is my game master. That whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so fucking weird that Battle is on with Inomineko for half the story. But right. I'll articulate on this when we get to episode four. Totally. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. EP3 is going to be well, a banger, but we just have to go through EP2. Uh, and I feel yeah. like there's going to be... We have to do two more episodes of EP2. EP2 is right? amazing. Shut up. <laughs> EP2 I, is very good. We still have I really to do like EP2. two more episodes. Two more episodes of EP2. Yeah, like, definitely. Because the tea party? Come on. 
that's a whole episode in itself. But Tea <laughs> Party is so fucking short, though, in comparison to what's actually happening. You're right. I mean, tea Party is only like 30 minutes, technically speaking. Is Hidden, it? Hidden, like, yeah, so okay. if you go online to look up, like, how long Hidden Tea Party and Tea Party is, it's like, Hidden Tea Party, you can be done in for, like, 17 minutes, and then Tea Party is, like, 30. I mean, it's very dense because, like, it's Lambda Delta and Burn Custom. Yeah, the whole implication of, like, Burn talking to you, too, like, just, I don't yes. know, it really got me going. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. It's great. <laughs> Is there anything else we want to talk about? Yeah. So I I don't have two things I really want to say. The first one is that, so like the thing I was talking about on this, on the spoiler free part about how Kumasawa and Goda had like stupid dialogue and also Rosa being absolutely dumb about like wanting to check the food to see if it has poison or not. On a reread, it makes so much sense because like, Goda and Kumasawa, they are both in on it. So they could just be bad actors. And that's why they sound so suspicious. And like Rosa, whole thing with her being, okay, fine, you can put the canned food in the kitchen while I'm not looking as long as I can look at it. That could be Rosa just being like, man, I know what's going on. I know the food is not going to be poison. And like, I don't feel like eating canned food. So like, yeah, sure, put it on a plate. Okay. It's such a funny scene because if you think about it, the idea that like the six people were killed because they were drugged first, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Rosa should know that. Like Rosa know that they're drugged. That there's poison right? that they could use to drug people to carry out more murders. Exactly. Yeah. But she just rolls with it, huh? I was also gonna say like Kumasawa. When I was reading, I at first I thought Kumasawa was like the most suspicious because yeah. she just like pops out out of nowhere after murders happen. I think that happened in episode one too, and I was like, she was also the only one who gets like these weird monologues. Like, is there some sort of connection to that? Obviously, it, like didn't turn out that way, but it just had me thinking in that yeah. direction as well. Is that? Yeah, but <laughs> my uh, off topic thing harks back to when des you said your friend revealed basically big mm-hmm. spoiler secrets to you when you read umineko like did you guys i think mushroom you read dungeon rampa too right yes i did no i haven't touched and, Rampa. Uh, that's what you're gonna ask me oh oh shit okay well i was going you can't to spoil me my... <laughs> i don't care i'm not gonna read dungeon rampa. okay so dear read uh, dear listeners if you haven't beaten dungeon rampa 2 tune out for a second but i was going to say the big twist at the end of dungeon rampa 2 is like it's a whole simulation like a uh, matrix like simulation uh, literally and the then... whole twist of <laughs> sorry continue <laughs> Yeah, but, um, the, uh, (laughs) you're right, but, um, (laughs) so my brother was playing through the first Danganronpa, and he got to the point where they were revealing the uh, whole apocalypse situation going outside the school, and I was asking him, like, hey, what do you think about it? And he's like, uh, I think I spoiled myself because I read a doujinshi where (laughs) everything was, like, some virtual reality porn machine, and I was like, oh, "Oh." I didn't, I didn't say that he spoiled the premise of the second game to him, but, like, once he finished the second game, I was like, so... <laughs> no, 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 that's really funny, because I know somebody who has a similar experience in that. Uh, it is very funny, but the doujin that's basically... Spoiled well, the game. Doujin, so, so this is another... No spoilers for Persona 4, but my friend told me this. I was talking to him about Persona 4. Okay, then... I don't want to be spoiled on Persona 4. Uh, no, th- no, I'm not I'm not going to exploit you for Persona 4. Anyway, okay. the point of the story is somebody was telling me about, they were like, I, I'm reading about Persona 4, and I was like, how do you think about the ending? And they were like, well, I got spoiled because I actually read, like, this dojing, <laughs> like, where, like, these two characters, like, have sex and then had emotional manipulation and i was like oh that's really fucking awkward that that's how you got spoiled F. with uh <laughs> just like the ending but i had this full funny conversation so just like all the previous episodes we talked about um i am currently still on my way of playing three houses and mm. i really like edelgard even though i know everything about edelgard is a walking spoiler 
And so my friend and I were joking that the fact that like I couldn't read anything on AO3, even though I adore fan fiction, and I couldn't even read porn, like <laughs> on, read smut on like AO3 because even smut spoilers, like there's yeah. just like people just start randomly shouting things that, like things that, like. And then why did you do this? And I'm like, oh fuck you! I did not know that was gonna happen in another hundred hours. Like why did you have to say that? Like, It'd be like that. That's trash. the thing with like, Neko, Like it's so long, but like you know you're curious enough to like look things up and obviously you're going to spoil yourself but like at the same time you're in the middle of like a 150 hour commitment there's like no way you're not going to like look something up you know like my favorite thing about the umineko spoiler is that if you look up umineko and then you look at the first like i think the top three results or something like one of it's like who is the culprit of umineko uh, or like umineko explained this again and it's the fucking it's the fucking rose nice. that just okay i think it's umineko solution or something or like culprit it's like literally the third search results and i was like this is the fucking worst imagine like <laughs> trying to like spoil yourself about Ubi Neko. You spoil yourself and you spoil yourself wrong. Yeah, yeah. Here, here. I will I will show you something and we have to show this in the episode, but this is literally the top search result. Look at it. It says Umi Neko culprit. And then that's a top result and it says, So before I will give you an outline of this video, I present Bruh. you to the people involved with my explanation, which is a group of two culprits of one accomplice, the main culprit whose Beatrice is Rosa. And I'm like, what? That's that's gold. Oh my god, the second gold bridge is George. This is literally top result. Like what the fuck? Well like, George isn't sucks. That horrible. No, and no, that's not isn't George. That... <laughs> that is horrible. That's horrible. That is horrible. Like, I have never Oh yeah. Also whoever listened to this podcast, fuck Dangarumpa. I guess Lorenzo's a Dangarumpa apologist, so like <laughs> I mean, I whatever, liked it but... a little bit, but then now I think about it, it's kinda weird. But at the same time, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Also, I hate children, but <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is full Dangarumpa spoilers, but saying that, like, oh, this is all a s- simulation, isn't that just the same twist as, the, like, Dangarumpa 3 anyway? Uh, V3? Yeah. Yeah, it was, but I like I liked how V3 carried it out, but um, sorry for V3 spoilers. It's a, it's a hit or miss for some people, but, like, if you binge the whole series like I did, it kind of hits you. It hits different, <laughs> I will say. But that is a discussion for another time. So any, okay. any I, party I thoughts? I just want to say something before we close the episode, which yeah. is that the episode was about to end, but of course Mushroom had to come in because we can't have a book club episode without mentioning three houses now, can we? <laughs> 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 it's like, it. this is like the fifth episode in a row. <laughs> I have so much, I, I have so much thoughts. Okay, so now it's okay. So these are episodes I want to happen in the future. I want a genders and umineko episode where we can just talk about like gender stuff. I was not like we don't even have to do talk about queer identity yet because EP three is all about like how Eva's a woman. That's why everybody hates her. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I want an episode about uh, umineko music, and I also kind of want to just do an episode. yeah, yeah, and I also want to do an episode. <laughs> about how much I hate other VNs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just hate a lot of VNs, man. It's just very ridiculous. I haven't thought about how anyway. important an episode on, like, the, the way these characters behave because of their gender, I guess. So I guess that's a very interesting topic to discuss, Mushroom. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. Because, I, I... like, when you think about gender, the problems with your gender, you know, when you always think about uh, Sayo, but when you think about characters like Natsuhi... Yeah. And uh, like... I was reading about this. Uh, I actually recently read this in a comment section of EP3. And basically, the cross was like, shut up, you're a woman, you're never going to be the heir. And then, and meanwhile, Eva's like passionately pleading about how she's way better than cross. And then Kinzo shows up, and Kinzo's like, shut the fuck up, you both. Also, shut up like extra more like eva you're a fucking woman like your worth is only to like give me a child like 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 as i produce a child you're nothing like get out of my fucking face you like idiot and the comment was just like it's kind of incredible to think about how misogynistic the ushirumiya family is mm-hmm. ushirumiya family are despite of the fact that like basically king Zhu, like positions himself as like a quote-unquote self-made man who summons up beatrice and gets the gold but like if you think about it, he he's at the mercy of this like random foreign lady who just showed up with a bunch of gold. Like 
like he's not a self-made man like right. <laughs> like he should like like the only thing is possibly ever like helped him in his career is like this woman who showed up with like shit loads of money yeah. and for him to like worship this like witch is insane because like meanwhile he's like extremely misogynistic to like his whole family mm. and then the second thing i like people brought up that i thought was amazing is that like Eva and Natsuhi are kind of, like, I think this is another, I think this is a take that I'm stealing from Tumblr, but they're, like, they're kind of like the a same coin, like, both, like, uh, each side of the same coin, because Eva is trying to please or trying to get intention from Kinzo to be as masculine as possible in the way of, like, being, like, or not masculine, sorry, but, like, be, like, taking up more, like, man roles, quote-unquote, whatever that means. And then, yeah. meanwhile, like, using the same kind of misogynistic mindset to put down Natsuki and calling her, like, she's no more better than a maid or, like, or just, like, a baby-making machine or whatever the fuck that means. Mm. And then, meanwhile, Natsuki's <laughs> trying to be, like, very, like, wifely, like, to appeal to Kingzo, to be like, oh, I'm such a good wife, like, I'm such a good, ah. um, like, home protector, like, I could do all True. of this. While both of them are trying extremely hard, like, neither of them succeeded. And I think that's really interesting. This, the whole, like, masculine feminine is very huge in Umi and Echo. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's all the rage. Also, I don't know if I have mentioned this, and I think it's probably really funny that, like, listeners have to listen to me babble about gender theory every time but like i'm i i wouldn't i'm gay i guess <laughs> I don't, that's you're a very, on the queer spectrum yes i'm on the queer <laughs> yes, spectrum you're somewhere I, there. I don't know I'm, you were from the homosexuals <laughs> yes I, um, I myself a homosexual <laughs> knows about the homosexual agenda but um i i wouldn't i wouldn't straight up call myself a lesbian but like i'm on the queer spectrum so that's why the, these topics are very interesting to me so we're done we should we should be done now we are so thank you so yep. much for listening to us tune in next week i guess when we talk even more about ep2 because we talked about this for like over an hour and a half at this point but um and we didn't basically t- yeah. covered nothing <laughs> we didn't but that's the magic of umi neko so thank you again for listening see cats your crime schedule later <laughs>